My name is Conrad Steiner. I'm a doctor of medicine. Tonight's story has the title, Break Through the Bars. Guardian of birth, healer of the sick, comforter of the aged. To the profession of medicine, to the men and women who labor in its cause, this story is dedicated. Our presentation tonight, the field of psychiatry, science of treating mental and emotional disorders. The object in point, small metal electrode. The case in point, Henry Clough Fisher, age 44, unmarried. Henry prides himself on excellent health. His life is carefully ordered. He maintains a balanced diet, mild exercise, neither drinks nor smokes. His biannual colds are not severe and have never caused him to miss a day's work. Yet despite his careful planning, Henry Fisher is marked for a serious and crippling illness. Is anything troubling you? There's nothing wrong with the bank. Think you'll have a fever? Will you stop it? Stop fussing over me! Henry, what's come over you? I've never seen you act like this. What's the matter? I'm sorry, sis. I just haven't been sleeping well lately. I lie awake thinking. Man my age, I'm nothing. You're not president of the bank, but I certainly think an assistant cashier is something to point to. Oh, I'm nothing at all, Martha. I'm wrong. I'm a misfit from the day I was born. Please, Henry. No use denying it. I live in the dark. Day after day, just living in the dark. Come on now, Henry, cheer up. Polly called me yesterday. Did something come between you? I'm your sister, Henry, you can tell me. I've got no business going out with women. I can't afford it. It's after eight. I'll be late. Henry, your lunch. I'll see you later. Henry, what about your breakfast? Mr. Lombardo, Sam. <clears throat> I'm uh, sorry, I'm late. I was delayed. We figured you cleaned out the bank, Henry. Thought sure you were headed for South America by now. See, this town when Cosmo was hotter. Gotta look ahead to get someplace in life. This is where the future's gonna be. You can take it from me. Well, we've got to take it from the facts, Mr. Liggett, but the plan certainly looks sound. Sound as a dollar. Pre-war dollar, that is. Well, I'll get back to you tomorrow. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Well, what is it today, Henry? Deviled egg or tuna fish? I haven't looked yet. Say, um, you want to come along with me? Going down to the flesh pots. Flesh pots? You know, down the street. The blue moon. Good looking girls. Nice bar. You know how Mr. Lombardo feels about drinking on lunch hour. That's why chlorophyll was born. Well, I've better things to do with my money than to throw it around in bars. Henry, my boy, trouble with you is you eat too many dry sandwiches.
Well, we'll hold up action until we hear from you. Thank you. Mr. Lombardo, the uh, Liggett subdivision. Of course, it hasn't been surveyed yet, but uh, I know the land. I know every inch of it. I have great insight in such matters. It's uh, my own feeling we ought to grant the loan. Hey, sir, your own feeling doesn't replace the system of this bank. Well, we've got to look to the future. We have to have vision. We have to know where to find the future. A minute wasted is a minute lost. I don't need a lecture on time, Fisher. Well, I think we ought to grant the loan. It's an excellent risk. Discovers the cocktail hour. <laughs> you finally broke loose from your cage, huh, boy? Not at all. All work and no play, you know. How do you do, miss? Uh, I've seen you around the bank. My name is Henry Fisher. Uh, excuse me. Lombardo? Henry Fisher on this end, Lombardo. Fisher? Oh, what the devil do you want at this hour of the night? What? What development? Now listen to me, Lombardo. I've got this all worked out. Now this calls for immediate action. I mean immediate! I'm down at the Blue Moon, you know, down the street from the bank. I'd like for you to get into your clothes and come down here right away. Otherwise, this development can mean a fortune in a matter of months, but we don't let them do it. We do it ourselves. Now, understand this, Lombardo. I don't want anything for myself. You can take all the profits. I'm doing this as a public service. I've got it all worked out about the money, too. Are you out of your mind, Fisher? I want to talk to you, Fisher. The first thing in the... I want to talk to you the first thing in the morning. And you see to it that you're sober. <laughs> How dare you? Now, just what? Clyde? Yes, sir? I decided I'm going to do something to you, Clyde. How's that? This color scheme, you know, the decor, the architecture, it's all wrong, Clyde, all wrong. Take that wall, for instance. Out, it's got to go. And that one, too. Expanse, width. No? Bigness! <laughs> That's what this place needs. Feeling of bigness! <laughs> I'll design it for you myself. <laughs> well, we don't charge, Clyde. I, I like you. We'll talk about it as soon as I get back. I have to go down the street, see a gentleman about some uh, very important negotiations. About a uranium mine. Will you excuse me, Clyde, please? Yeah, sure, Mr. Fisher. Go ahead. I'll be back in a few minutes.
of mist on a hill of a rainbow that... Pardon me, have you seen Henry Fisher? Fisher? You his wife? Sister. Stand there. Oh, my darling, you're second to none. Glad you showed up. I was going to call the cops. I've been trying to close up here, and he won't go home. Started off buying drinks for all the customers. That's fine. But then he started bothering them, arguing. Then he got to telling me how to mix my drinks. He's been running in and out of here all night. First, he had to go see a man about a uranium mine. Then he had to go down to the city hall to talk to the mayor. Henry isn't used to drinking. He ain't been drinking, lady. Only two plain glasses of ginger ale all night. That's all he's had. Henry. Martha, how are you? Mr. Lombardo called me Henry. Oh, I presume he wants to apologize. Well, we'll just keep him dangling a little while. I'll teach him a lesson. Come on, Martha, let's dance. Oh, Henry, I, I think we'd better go home. Well, I don't want to reserve this space every night. I'll send you a check. Okay, only I think I'd rather have cash. Why? I'll buy this place. I'll have you fired! Oh, please, Henry, we're leaving right away. Don't argue with him, Martha. Pay him anything he asks. Of a meadow that glitters Beautiful like song. gold. You know who wrote it? Neither do I. But I sent him a check through the record company. I believe in fostering creative talent. Henry. It's very intriguing. I think I'll buy it. Henry, I have to see Dr. Paley tonight. Uh, I need some more of my medicine. Could we drop by the hospital, Henry? Hospital? Comfort the sick? Huh? I'm going to do something for sick people. Something quick for the sick. Would you do me a favor, Henry? Of course, dear. Anything you ask. But first, we have to get to the hospital. Something quick for the sick. Something quick for the sick. You just sign there, Henry. Then you can stay here for a while and help people. You can be helped yourself. How's this for a signature, Dr. Paley, huh? Very intricate. That's so they can't forge it. Very interesting, Henry. You take this, honey. We can right through here. All righty. If, uh, if there's anything that you need, just ask for it. <laughs> <laughs> Down at the bank, we've got time locks. See that they put time locks on all these doors. He's in 214. Thank you. This is your room, Henry. Fine, fine. Uh, have this bed removed, would you please? There isn't going to be any time for sleeping. When I start reorganizing around here, there'll be no time for sleep. <laughs> well, let's get moving. How many people do we have here? Oh, bring them all out. I want to talk to them all. You're trying to keep me here. You can't keep me here. It's for your own good, Henry. You did this. Do what they say, Henry. You betrayed me! <laughs> Please don't! Get... 
This is Dr. James Barth, Martha. He's a psychiatrist. Dr. Barth wants to ask you a few questions about Henry. If you'll excuse me, please, I have a call to make. I'll look in and see you later, Martha. Won't you sit down, Miss Fisher? I don't know what to say, Doctor. There was never anything like this in the family. What's happened to your brother is no disgrace, Miss Fisher. It's fairly common. One out of every four persons has some sort of nervous or mental illness during his life. Actually, one out of every ten is ever hospitalized for it. But he is insane, isn't he? That's a legal, not a medical term. Let's say that he's temporarily unable to manage his affairs, that he's not responsible for what he does, and he needs help. Has he had any serious illnesses? No. Henry's been quite healthy. He had the usual childhood sicknesses, measles and chickenpox. No accidents involving the head, no falls? No, I'm sure of that. Your brother was never married? Neither of us. Father died when we were children. We lived with Mother until she passed away about eight years ago. Well, how did your brother react to your mother's death, Miss Fisher? He took it very hard. It worried me quite a bit at the time. Couldn't eat, couldn't sleep, moped around for the longest time. Doctor, how could this happen? How could Henry become a raving maniac like this? Well, it's unfortunate you saw that outburst because it's the usual popular conception of a lunatic. Actually, your brother was in extremely high spirits and reacting with frustration when he was crossed. A drunken man reacts much the same way. I thought he had been drinking. He'd been throwing money around, writing checks. That's typical of the manic depressive reaction. It can go either way either into deep depression or into great exhilaration. But why? How did it happen? Well, to understand a depressive, you must imagine that everything has gone wrong. You're no good, a failure, a sinner, an outcast. To conceive the manic stage, think of your happiest moment, some triumphs, some exhilarations when you were on top of the world. His thoughts are not distorted, they're simply exaggerated. Will we have to send him to an asylum? No, no, we'll treat him here. And if everything goes well, we expect to have him home in a few weeks. You mean you can cure him? I can't guarantee a cure, Miss Fisher. But I'm reasonably confident that we can help him get over this attack and back to work. He might go through his entire life without further incident. We'll probably start electrotherapy in a few days. You mean electric shock treatments? That's an unfortunate name for medical treatment, Miss Fisher. It isn't shock. As you think of an electric shock from a lamp cord, it's a stimulation of certain areas of the brain. Some tests will have to be made before we start treatment. I see. His brain is unbelievably active. He's incoherent because he's thinking so rapidly. It's what we call the flight of ideas. Now, left alone, he'd run himself into a state of absolute collapse. Exhaustion doesn't bring relaxation. It produces further stimulation. So, we have to slow him down. For this purpose, we use hydrotherapy. The constantly circulating lukewarm water helps to relieve tension. We also use mild sedation to help him get the sleep his excitement will not allow. Before starting any treatment, we do a complete physical and neurological examination and all the indicated laboratory tests to rule out organic disease or injury. After that, with written permission, of course, we begin electroconvulsive therapy. I can take all the electricity you can give me. Don't spare me now. This isn't an ordinary test, you know. Some of the rest of them might have trouble. <laughs> Although they need help, I can't blame them. I'll, I'll help them. I'll get around to it. Yes. <clears throat> as far as that goes, banks are full of happy people. I'll help them. <laughs> they can't take it, so uh, the rest of them... I'm afraid I'm going to have to help them. <laughs> I'm going to have to help. The injection of a mild anesthetic 
is simply to relax the patient and prevent apprehension. There is no discomfort connected with the treatment. a very low intensity measured in thousands of an ampere is applied to the temporal area. Ready to treat. We produce a controlled convulsion. It's likely that after 10 to 20 treatments, the patient will be discharged from the hospital. He will probably return for additional treatments on an outpatient basis. He will also receive further supportive psychotherapy. Doctor, you really think I'm well enough to try to go back to work? Well, you finished your electrotherapy. There's still a few things we can work out in interviews, but there's no reason why you should be sitting around. I talked to the manager of your bank this morning. Well, I don't expect Mr. Lombardo to take me back. He didn't say he wouldn't. He wants to see you. I explained your case very carefully. Well, it won't do any good, but thanks anyway, Doctor. I'll find something else. I'll watch myself, try not to get excited. Henry, don't watch yourself. Go out and live your life. Enjoy it. Believe in yourself. You're just as good as the next man. I don't think you'll have a bit of trouble. Wonderful idea. Never occurred to me. Do you keep thinking about it? I will. And I'll see you next week for your regular appointment. Thank you. Your old desk still here. Come in. recent past, torture to drive out the demons was a common treatment for mental illness. Today, countless thousands who a few short years ago would have been hopelessly institutionalized are returned to life as happy, productive members of society. There is still much to be learned, but each day brings new knowledge to the psychiatrist, and each bit of knowledge is a torch dispelling darkness from the human mind.